Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm going to show you how I made this super cool acrylic and resin planner. They're so much fun to do, so easy to put together. I'm going to have all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You're even going to find some discount codes for you there as well. And be sure to check us out on social media. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to to my channel. We do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so here are the acrylic blanks that we're gonna be working with today. I believe these are the eight by five ones. Don't quote me on that. They're the A5 size journal covers or notebook covers um, that you can find on the Wood Elf Crafting website that I have linked down below in the description box, okay? And when you order these, you wanna make sure that you are ordering two, okay? They don't come as a set, so you need to order two of these blanks in order to have a full set, okay? Uh, we're gonna remove the paper backing on just one side of these, okay? We're gonna leave the other side um, with the paper backing on it. And I like to just use a sharp craft knife to lift the corner of that paper and then completely peel it back. Once we have that paper backing removed from the one side, I'm going to lightly sand the surface so that we have a nice happy surface for our epoxy to adhere to. Here I'm just using a 120 grit sanding block that I had on hand. Doesn't really matter what grit you use. Really, we just wanna rough up the surface, particularly the edges where our epoxy bond will be the most vulnerable. All right, and then once we're done sanding, I'm just going to wipe off any debris with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel, and now we're ready to roll. All right, so to get set up here, I've got a old baking sheet that I use for all of my resin pouring projects and I've lined it with some parchment paper and I've got some uh, like paper cups that I use also for the same kind of purpose and I like to reuse them so I'm not creating a lot of waste and I'm just going to use these to elevate my blanks so that when we pour they're not going to it's not going to pull up resin on the bottom of my piece. You also want to make sure that they're completely level. Uh, and we also want to make sure that where we set these to dry, they'll be completely level as well. I've got 120 milliliters of epoxy mixed here. Uh, probably a little more than I need, but I'd rather have a little extra than not enough because when you're in the heat of the moment here, you do not want to be low on epoxy. <laughs> I'm going to divvy up a uh, some of this epoxy into five different small medicine cups and I want to keep a reserve of clear epoxy in that same mixing cup. So hold on to about mm, at least 30 milliliters of epoxy in that that main cup there. All right, so to mix our colorants, I am going to start with my gold mica. This is a um, gold mica from Nicole Merritt Original. This is called Bogart. Definitely one of my favorite mica powders. Then for our white, I'm gonna be using white epoxy dye from Alumalite, all-time favorite epoxy dye. It's absolutely fantastic. Put just like two or three drops of that into there. And then for the teal color, I'm gonna use dispersion colors from counterculturediy.com. These dispersion colors are really old. Um, <laughs> I've had these for like two, at least I think two years or more. Um, and I think they're probably not good. So I'm sure the dispersion colors you guys get from the website now are probably way better, um, but I just kind of wanted to use what I had on hand. I used Tsunami for the teal and then Marvelous Mauve, I think it's called for that kind of mauve -y gray color. And then I used Phalo Blue Acrylic uh, Paint for that dark blue. Uh, that paint is from the Arteza Premium Acrylic Set. And it's great for dyeing epoxy. You just don't want to add too much, especially with a project like this, very conservative with your paint. So we're going to get all of these mixed up. And I do want to add that when I got to the acrylic paint, I did add a very, very like minuscule amount of black epoxy dye to that blue just to add some depth and darkness. I really wanted a deep, deep dark blue 
uh, for that color. So get creative, mix up your colors. You know, I'm very specific when I'm picking the colors for these projects. Um, I, again, I was really disappointed about how my dispersion colors looked in epoxy. Uh, so I'm going to have to try this again with some newer ones. I'm sure they would look way better, but whatever. All right, and so once we've got all our colorants mixed, we're ready to start pouring. I've got that prepped side of my acrylic blank facing up. The protected paper part is facing down, of course. And I wanna spread a small amount of that clear epoxy over my blank first, okay? What this is gonna do is give a nice kind of lubricated surface for my colorants to move around. And I just find that I get better results this way. So we're going to take that clear epoxy that we had reserved and just spread that all over our blanks first. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to try and get it evenly coated and completely coated. <laughs> okay. Um, this was a little bit awkward because my epoxy was starting to cure pretty quickly and it was a little bit tough to spread. Um, but I just stayed persistent, kept at it, and I got a nice even coat there. All right, now we're ready for the fun part. So as far as like where and how to pour what colors first and how that is like completely up to you, um, I just kind of let it rip and let my heart you know, decide where it wants to go. You can see in the video that I added just a little bit too much paint to this blue. It was getting a little stringy, but it did okay. Um, and I just sort of, I don't know. I just let my heart guide me on the pouring here. Um, be conservative in how much you're pouring. Remember, we've got two whole blanks to fill here. Uh, so be mindful of your placement and amounts um, when, you're, when you're going for this. At some point after I poured some of these colors, I did try to, you know, smear them together a little bit just to facilitate some some mixing going on there. I don't know what I was trying to do, but I was just having fun. I wanted a, a lot of white in this design. And so once we've got all of that poured on there, I just kind of spread it out a little bit and let things level. And then I got out my heat gun and started to move this stuff around with my heat gun heat gun that I'm using here is actually an old embossing gun and definitely not ideal for this type of project. I will link a heat gun that I would recommend down below in the description box. You don't want to use an embossing gun because it's not going to provide uh, a strong enough like direction of heat with good airflow to move that epoxy around efficiently. So you're going to end up having more concentration of heat with not a lot going on, which you risk burning or scorching your epoxy at that point. So this was a challenge <laughs> to just have this to work with, um, but I've been really stubborn over the years and really haven't wanted to buy a heat gun, but I think, I think I'm ready for that, that commitment. So I ordered a new heat gun. I'll have one here next week. Uh, I will link the one that I purchased, um, again, down below in the description box. 10 out of 10 would recommend that instead of this old heat gun. But anyway, uh, the point of the heat gun here is to heat up and move that epoxy. We're looking for movement. You don't want to hold the heat in any one place for too long because, again, you could burn your epoxy. Um, but there's just some really magical things that happen when you start to heat up and move this epoxy and the colors start to blend together and you get that beautiful lacing. It's just absolutely magical. So you'll notice that I did start moving around my colorants before I added my metallic mica. And I did that on purpose. I didn't want too much blending with that mica. I wanted it to be very... Um, kind of isolated in where it was. I didn't want too much movement in it. Uh, so once I got, um, you know, a good design laid out with my colorants, I came in with my micas last in just a really conservative drizzle. And then as soon as I got it drizzled on there, I went right over it with my heat gun and let the magic happen. Like these micas, when they interact and play with your paints and your epoxy dyes and your dispersion inks, they're just so gorgeous, so beautiful. 
absolutely love it. And it looks really hard to do, but it's actually not. We're just pouring epoxy onto acrylic, moving it around with a heat gun and letting the chips fall where they may, okay? You're gonna have to give up a little bit of control on this and trust the process. Um, and if you get all this stuff on there and you're not quite loving how it looks, just maybe add a little more heat in certain places. Maybe you add a little bit more color in another place and kind of blend it more with your heat gun. You can always do that, but I will say you don't want to mess with this too much, okay? We do have a pot life that we are working against, you know, so our epoxy is going to start to cure. It is going to refuse to move <laughs> after a certain point. Uh, I'm using Alumalite's Amazing Clear Cast, and so I've got about a 30 to 45 minute pot life, I think, on this. Um, so it's pretty good, but especially when we have this concentrated heat, we're going to force that epoxy to cure sooner. So we can't really mess around too much, okay? I did end up adding a little bit more white after the fact, and you can definitely tell that it moved at a different rate and behavior than the epoxy that I had poured prior. So keep that in mind. Um, you kind of have one shot to get it right. Uh, if you wanted to do another pour right over the top of this, you probably could, but it might look a little bit weird, <laughs> okay? So... Once I was done messing around with this, uh, I just let it dry for about four to six hours, and then I came right back over it with a clear coat of epoxy. Don't be discouraged if when you come back to this and it's all wavy and, and whatnot, totally fine. Just go over it with a clear coat of epoxy and that is going to level itself out and look way better. Another thing you want to pay attention to is these little holes here. If after you get done with your pour and you're done, you know, moving it around with the heat gun and all that jazz, you'll want to come back with like a pencil or like one of these little silicone brushes to just push down any epoxy that might have like gathered in that hole there. Uh, but that's the extent of, of hole protection that you'll need to worry about. It just goes right through it. It doesn't, it doesn't clog up or anything like that. All right, so here I am at like the five hour mark. My, you know, my pour's been drying for five hours and I'm putting 30 milliliters of just clear epoxy over this. This is Alumalite's Amazing Clear Cast. And I'm just gonna spread it all over uh, evenly. And then once I've got my epoxy spread on there nicely, I'm gonna go over it with my torch to pop any bubbles. And then we'll let this dry for about eight to 12 hours at the very least. Um, before we start to mess with it. So keep in mind, dry times may vary based on the brand of your epoxy and all of that. All right, so here we are 12 hours later and I like the results, turned out pretty well. If I had more time, I would probably put another coat of clear epoxy over this just to get it completely smooth, but I don't have that kind of time this week, so I'm just going to accept where we're at here, okay? I've got a craft knife that I'm going to scrape along the sides uh, to get that excess epoxy off, and then we'll just peel off that paper backing from the back. And that paper backing really does a bang up job at protecting the other side from any drip down. So you really don't need to worry about that with this project, which is super nice. Okay, and the epoxy that is along the edges of that acrylic are really easy to scrape off with your craft knife. You just got to get under it and it should peel off pretty easily. All right, at least mine did. This is super satisfying for me. It was probably my favorite part <laughs> of this project. Uh, and I love how everything looks from the back. It was like unwrapping a Christmas present to see how it would look on the back of that acrylic. So much fun. All right. And also at this time, if you wanted to put any decals on this and do another coat of epoxy over your decals, or even just leave the decals, to be honest, because this is just like a, uh, you know, a journal. So it's not like we absolutely have to seal our decals if we don't want to. 
okay? And again, just using my craft knife to clean up any kind of excess and pop off any unnecessary, you know, bits of epoxy comes right off, really easy to do. Just be careful you don't scratch the, you know, blank side of your acrylic there, okay? All right, and then from here, it's just a matter of assembling your planner. I absolutely had so much fun finding all the little like products and stuff that you can choose for these. There's so many options for these one inch binder clips. I got these antique gold ones. They also came with black in the listing that I bought, but you can get like rainbow colored. You can get so many options. These are A5 size notebook paper packs okay uh, and again lots of different options for those as well these are the little one inch rainbow colored clips i got so cute like if you wanted to do you know whatever color project you wanted to do and then i also got these uh divider sheets as well so if you wanted to use this as like a real planner you have um you know pre-made divider sheets that you can buy on amazon i'm going to have all these linked down below and the possibilities here are endless. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am not a planner. I am not organized. <laughs> so I am new to the world of planners. But I just think all the options and things to put these together is so much fun. These dividers came in a pack of three. So there is actually three packs of a full set of dividers. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. I'm sure you could cut your own using cardstock and your Cricut. Um, but yeah, so I just put this together um, pretty self-explanatory. I ended up using two packs of paper. I bought it in a pack of three packs, if that makes sense, okay? And two packs of paper with that one pack of the dividers was plenty of uh, bulk for the notebook and the rings that I got. If you wanted to have a fuller notebook, I would maybe recommend getting a larger ring, like the 1.2 or the 1.5 inch rings. But these one inch rings were the perfect size um, for what I ended up putting in there. All right, and so that wraps it up for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you wanna see more ideas using these planner journal covers because I'm absolutely obsessed. I had so much fun putting this together. So anyway, thank you again for watching my video and we will see you again real soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.